Hey everyone, in the last video I posted, we went through the code for the source panel method applied to a circular cylinder, compared the pressure coefficient to an analytical solution, and looked at some other plots. It wasn't quite clear from that video how limited we are in the source panel method, however. In this video, we will use the same code with a little more functionality in order to load and analyze airfoil, so let's jump in. Since this code is based on the SP circle code from my last video, I won't be discussing the sections I already talked about in that video, so if you feel like I glossed over something here, please go back and watch that video first. So let's start up in the header of the file. You can see that we're doing the source panel method for a single airfoil, and down here you can see that uh, I have the functions needed, and you can see that two of them are the same from the previous video, but we also have one called xfoil and one called compute circulation. This one you should have seen from a previous video, uh, but this one is new. We also need to have uh, the xfoil program in this directory, so you can see over here I have the xfoil.exe in the same directory, and we also need the following folder, airfoil underscore dat underscore selig and that's up here and this contains all of the airfoils that I downloaded from the UIUC airfoil database and you could see uh, two references down here for my uh, YouTube video for downloading all these files and the Python code for downloading all of these files. First let's take a look at the code blocks in this script and you can see that it's very similar to the SP circle code. Uh, the only thing that has changed really is that we're loading the xfoil airfoil or creating one instead of creating just a circle geometry and the second one down here is we can calculate the circulation and compare it to the source strength. So first we're going to look at the known section here and the first thing you'll see is the airfoil loading flags. One of these always has to be set to equal to one and the other one has to be set equal to zero. Whichever one is equal to one will be the one that's used. So the first option here is called xfoil create and when this is set to one then xfoil will create the airfoil designated down here in the NACA variable. When xfoil load is equal to 1, then the user, you, will be able to select an airfoil from the airfoil DAT selig folder. You can leave the V infinity equal to 1 because it's non-dimensional, and we can change the angle of attack later when we're looking at some of the results. The plotting flags are the same as the previous video, except there's one extra plot in here, but if it's equal to 1, it'll plot it. If it's equal to 0, it won't plot it. One thing to note is that computing streamlines is uh, computationally intensive depending on how big your grid is, so if you want to speed things up and only look at the pressure coefficient plots to compare those, you can set this one equal to 0 and this one equal to 0, and it'll speed up the computation time by quite a bit. This next section is where we will create or load the airfoil into xfoil and get some results back. These options here are going to be passed into the xfoil function and these uh, define the PPAR menu options or the paneling menu options. Uh, you can read about these, these are actually what they're called in xfoil over on the right hand side, but the two main ones are N and P. So N is for the number of panel nodes, that one's very familiar, and then P might be a little bit different and that's the panel bunching parameter. So the higher the value this is, the more bunching there will be at the leading edge and the trailing edge. The lower it is, the less bunching at the leading and trailing edge. So if I just look at uh, running it right now, you could see that there's some bunching at the leading and trailing edges, so you get a lot more panels at the leading and trailing edge. And then let's say that we set this down to something like 0 0.25 and run it again. And now you can see there's less bunching, it's more evenly spread out over the airfoil. You can play around with these options here and see what they look like on the final airfoil, but I tend to keep these at the values listed right here. The next thing we're going to do is call the xfoil function, so we're passing as inputs the NACA airfoil that we want, which will only get used if we want to create the NACA airfoil instead of loading. Then we're uh, putting in the PPAR menu options, we're also sending in the angle of attack and also the flag airfoil, so that decides whether we're creating or loading the airfoil. And what we get back are these two variables, xfoil results, that's just a structure of all the results, and then success, where this variable, if, if a user cancels out of the uh, dialog to select an airfoil, then it'll just exit the program and you can run it again. So here we are in the xfoil function, and this is similar to my video that I made a while ago about calling xfoil from MATLAB or Python, but with a couple of small changes that I needed for this particular program. So let's just go through the code real quick. You can see here that we have loaded the flag airfoil, so uh, if I want to create the airfoil, then we're going to use the NACA variable that we loaded in, and if I want to load one from my directory, then I'm going to open up a dialog box that you can then select the airfoil, and this is why the folder has to be called airfoil DAT selig and if you want to change the folder name or the location you'll just have to change this particular path. I put this in here as DAT because all of these files should be DAT files. 
Then down here I'm creating the text files that we're going to be saving the data to, and then we'll delete the files if they exist in the directory. Then we're going to create the airfoil and run uh, xfoil from MATLAB. And so you can see here that if we are loading an airfoil, then we load the airfoil from the particular directory with all the airfoils. If we want to create the airfoil, then we're just going to create the NACA airfoil based off of the NACA airfoil that we selected back in the SP airfoil script. Then we're going to do all the paneling here, then we're going to save all those airfoil data points, then we're going to set the angle of attack and get the uh, pressure coefficient, and then we're also going to save the polar data, uh, so like the lift coefficient, drag coefficient, moment coefficient. We're going to call the uh, xfoil executable with that input file, and then we're going to delete that once we have all the output uh, text files that we created up here. Since I want to do all the data reading inside of this function instead of inside my script, then the next sections here are going to be reading the CP data file and setting the variables in the XFOIL results. Then we're going to read the AirFOIL coordinates and set them in the XFOIL results variable. And then we're going to read the polar data and set them in the XFOIL results. And we're going to delete all those files so that we don't have them cluttering up our current folder. Okay, now with a successful return of the data, we have XFOIL results as this structure, and what I'm doing here is separating out the results from that structure into their separate variables. It was just easier to pass it back as a single single variable from that function. So you can see we have the X coordinates, Y coordinates, uh, the pressure coefficient, then we have the actual boundary points for the airfoil, the lift coefficient, drag coefficient, moment coefficient, and then here from the boundary points, right, we're uh, computing the number of boundary points and then the number of panels or control points. Now this is where I'm actually going to gloss over a little bit of stuff that I covered in my previous video. You can see that after we loaded the airfoil, we then check the panel directions and flip if necessary. Then we compute the panel method geometry. Then we compute the source and panel strengths using our compute IJSPM function. We create the left-hand side, the A matrix. We create the right-hand side, the B array. And then we compute the source panel strengths. We can check those values. Then we can use those uh, source panel strengths to compute the panel tangential velocities and thus the panel pressure coefficients. We can compute the lift and the drag and display those and compare them to the XFOIL data. Then we can compute the streamlines in this entire section here. And then this section we need to talk about real quick. In this section, we are computing the circulation around the airfoil and comparing it to the sum of the source panel strengths. And if this function here, the compute circulation function, looks familiar to you, then thank you for watching my how to compute circulation video. And what we're doing here is making an ellipse that encircles the airfoil and computing the circulation around that ellipse. And you'll note that I'm only doing this if we've selected these two uh, plots because we need the VX and VY velocities on the grid points to be able to compute this circulation around the ellipse. Since this is the source panel method, the sum of the source panel strengths, or sum lambda, will be equal to zero, and the circulation should also be equal to zero since we don't have any vortex flow. Uh, and so this section really just serves as a sanity check. And lastly down here in this section we have all of the figure plotting that you'll see in just a second. And you can see that in addition to my MATLAB code, I have pretty much the exact same Python code, again, with all of the functions needed. And you can see over in my file explorer that we have the XFOIL executable as well as the AirFoil DAT Selig folder. And so this code right here is as close as to exact as I can get it to MATLAB with different syntax. So the first case that we're going to run is where I create. So that's why this is set to 1. This is the create airfoil and xfoil. Uh, we're going to create a 0012 airfoil and run it at 0 degrees angle of attack. And this is a good first test case when you transition your code from the simple circular cylinder since this airfoil is symmetric. And this is a good intermediate sanity check. So if we run this by pressing F5 here, then we get the following two figures because I've suppressed the other ones. So we can check the paneling uh, and check the panel orientations by zooming in on the trailing edge to see the first and second panel. You can actually tell right now that it's correct because the panel normal vectors, which are what the red ones are, that are scaled to the panel length are pointing out of the polygon, which we know is correct. Otherwise, they'd be pointing into the polygon. See my panel method geometry video if you want a primer on that. Uh, we can see the first panel here, the second panel here, which does mean that we are indeed going around clockwise. And now you might be saying, what happens here? There's no uh, panel normal vector, and so is there like a zero uh, length panel here? And we can actually get some more insight by going onto this one where we're showing the 
boundary points in black and the control points in red and you can actually see that there is an open trailing edge so if you watch my video on how to mathematically create the NAC of four digit airfoil series uh, there are two options when you create them that one is an open trailing edge one is a closed trailing edge this is clearly using the open trailing edge formulation and so you end up getting nothing that's connecting the two trailing edge points together and so uh, if you do connect them then you get an extra panel here and if you don't connect them uh, when you sum up the source panel strengths you won't technically get back to zero since it's not a closed geometry but uh, it gives you a pretty close approximation you're still close to zero. I'm going to keep it this way even though it's not completely closed because you seem to get good results anyway and this can be a topic for future discussion if we want to. A lot of the airfoils that you load in from the uh, Selig format airfoil files uh, will actually have a closed trailing edge so this won't really be an issue but for these particular geometries and maybe some of the other airfoils in that folder uh, you will get an open trailing edge and you'll just have to uh, either leave it open or you can close it yourself by kind of adding a point halfway between and adding a panel at the back which I've also done uh, but this seems to work okay okay now I've run the same airfoil the 0012 at zero angle of attack for uh, the next two plots and so this one on the left is showing the airfoil in the black closed polygon and the uh, red and the blue lines are the CP vectors so they're the pressure coefficient the blue ones are pointing into the airfoil and the red ones are pointing out of the airfoil and so you can see that it's symmetric which it should be since this is a symmetric airfoil at zero degrees angle of attack uh, and they're scaled based off of their magnitude now on the right hand plot we're plotting the pressure coefficient and uh, forgive me that my legends are not complete here they are in the MATLAB but they're not in the Python uh, but the upper and the lower is the, the blue is always the upper the red is always the lower the solid lines are the X foil pressure coefficient results and the squares are the uh, source panel method results from my code and so you can see that they're quite close to each other for this 0012 airfoil all the way from the leading edge you know they're a little bit off all the way to the trailing edge and now this seems to look okay because the pressure coefficient plot matches to the X foil uh, and the results down here if you look at the lift coefficient drag coefficient and moment coefficient you can see that they look like they're pretty much matching up uh, just ignore drag coefficient really in general I just put it here for completeness but we're not getting a drag coefficient from these from these codes at least I'm not uh, but the thing is that for a symmetric airfoil you're going to get zero lift so even though it matches this is kind of a, a case where it's uh, it's a little bit of a red herring because it doesn't adequately show you the limitations of the source panel method so what can I do to show you that this is limited in its application well let's change the airfoil from a symmetric airfoil to a cambered airfoil and so we're gonna go to a NACA 2412 and I'll just run this again and you can see the pressure coefficient plot and now you can see that the X foil results in the solid line do not match or my source panel method in the in the squares do not match the X foil results and you can also see that down here now that the X foil results does show a lift coefficient and it does show a moment coefficient uh, but my source panel method is still effectively zero okay so the shape looks okay for the pressure coefficient plot right we see this peak up on the lower surface for both of them and we also see this more gradual increase uh, for the upper surface but where it really gets crazy is at the trailing edge and you can see that my source panel method results completely go nuts at the trailing edge and this is because we're not satisfying the cut a condition which I'll talk about more when I get into my vortex panel method videos but essentially the uh, flow at the trailing edge has to come off tangent to the trailing edge so the so essentially what that's saying is that your uh, your first panel and the last panel the velocities have to come off parallel to each other and so they're not doing that in this particular case so you get these completely wild uh, pressure coefficients at the trailing edge so what I've done here is use the same 2412 airfoil but now with an angle of attack of 10 degrees and you can see the same pressure coefficient plot here but now the SPM results are much different from the X foil results and you can see the trailing edge where the pressure coefficient uh, goes way negative and you can see that on the streamline plot here uh, where the airfoil is still horizontal and you can see that the uh, streamlines are coming in at a at an angle of attack of 10 degrees and you can see what's happening is that at the trailing edge it's a little harder to see here it's easier on a quiver plot but at the trailing edge the flow is wrapping around the trailing edge which increases the velocity and that's why you get such a low pressure coefficient and so this is not enforcing the cut a condition because again like I mentioned before the flow 
leaving the trailing edge has to be smooth from the uh, or parallel from the top and bottom of the airfoil. Now you might be thinking that what if we change the angle of attack of the airfoil? Can we get the streamlines to come off of the trailing edge parallel? So let's check that out by changing the angle of attack to negative two. So this gives us an interesting result. We can see that the flow from the trailing edge looks like it's coming off parallel. And if we look at the pressure coefficient plot, then it actually looks like it's matching the X-foil results quite well. And now you can see that the uh, uh, pressure coefficient at the trailing edge is, is matching right at the trailing edge, which is what the cut of condition should be saying. However, there's still a problem. So you can see where the problem is by looking at the lift coefficient. You can see that the X-foil lift coefficient is uh, positive, still small, and it's small because we're getting to the uh, zero lift angle of attack for this particular cambered airfoil, um, which is going to be somewhere in the negative angle of attack range. But for the source panel method, we're still effectively at zero. And if you look at the sum of the source panel strengths, this is also effectively zero. Again, it's not going to be exactly zero uh, because of numerical accuracy and because we don't have that closing panel at the trailing edge. But when we compute the circulation around the airfoil, this is going to be equal to zero. And that's because we don't have any vortex flow elements on our airfoil. We have uh, computed this based off of an airfoil defined by just source panels. And so in order to get lift based off of the Kutajukowski theorem, we're going to have to include vortex flow into our uh, formulation. And there's just two last things to note before we end this video. The first is that we can also plot the pressure coefficient contour plot, and this is solved by taking the x and the y velocities at every single grid point outside of the airfoil, computing the pressure coefficient based off of that velocity magnitude, and then plotting the contour plot. And it's wrong, right? We know that this is wrong for the source panel method. This is not the actual flow over the airfoil, but you can see what we will be able to get when we move to the vortex panel method. And the last thing we're going to do is switch over from creating the airfoil based off of the NACA input to loading an airfoil. So all I'm going to do is change this to a 0 and this to a 1, and then we'll run it. It'll open up a select airfoil file dialog box, and let's just pick a weird one down here like BR13. And so we can see here that we get a different pressure coefficient plot based off of the X-foil results. And actually, in this particular case, even at zero degrees angle of attack, uh, we get that the trailing edge is coming off kind of pretty much parallel, and so we get a very close solution. But as we showed before, if I change the angle of attack at all, this is going to completely differ from the X-foil results. So after the results shown in this video, I think we have a clear motivation for moving to the formulation and implementation of the vortex panel method, which will be the topic of my next videos. We will need to go through the derivation of the geometric integrals, since they are different than the source panel method. And then we'll take this code here and modify it to be correct for the vortex panel method. And you can see a sneak peek here, which is the 2412 at zero degrees angle of attack, which we know is incorrect from what I just showed you for the source panel method. But you can see now we get it to match up, and that's by enforcing the cut a condition and adding the vortex panels as opposed to the source panels. And you can see that there's still maybe some slight issues with this method, uh, which I will then use to motivate my combined source panel vortex panel method code, which will be the culmination of all of these derivations that I've done here. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.